Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we're actually going to be covering Arda, one of my all-time favorite characters. Definitely has to be one of my go-to characters right now of playing in Season 5 as well as some of the past seasons. And today with me I have Shuvi Senpai. How are you doing today, Shuvi? Doing pretty good. Very excited to watch an Arda game. I know, you know, you just mentioned that he has been one of your favorite characters. I know you found a lot of success with him towards the end of Season 4 as well. Very excited to see what kind of Arda gameplays we're going to be seeing because you're going to highlight it in just a moment, Athena, but he has a lot of ways that he can use his kit. Yeah, absolutely. I'll try my best here to kind of go over some of the Arda gameplay here for everyone. I mean, definitely one of my favorite characters, especially because, you know, I've gone from being known as the Priya one trick to the Arda uh, player. So going over some of the kit for anyone that doesn't know how Arda works, we're actually going to work a little bit backwards with the character. I'm going to start with his ultimate. So with his ultimate unleashed power, how this works is that he'll actually enhance one of his three abilities, his Q, W or E and they don't share cooldowns with each other. So you can use your Q and then you can also use RQ. So starting off with your Q, this deals damage in a straight line. Uh, if you activate the ultimate variant, it'll send out a bigger straight line that also deals additional damage on a second proc in the middle of it in the straight line. Next is his W. This one is Babylon's cube. Activating this will cause a square to appear on the ground, slowing enemies on the first tick and stunning them on the second tick. If you enhance it with your ultimate though, it'll actually create uh, four walls around the cube, which will actually root targets that walk into it and stun on the fifth tick instead of the second tick. Next is Nimrod's tombstone. This ends up actually dropping a tombstone at a target location, knocking back and dealing damage to enemies. And the activated version of Nimrod's tombstone will actually let you put down two tombstones, the first one being on Arda, and then the third one or the second one being uh, at the target location that you've chosen, where you're able to actually teleport between the two. Lastly is... Oh. Yeah, I was just saying that overall, I think Arda's utility is just really, really good, especially with the tombstone. So you got to use it to line up a lot of other stuff in your kit. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, a lot of Arda's kits sort of just naturally works together in a lot of utility ways. I mean, he's got AoE zone denial. He's got stuns. He's got roots. He's got knockbacks. He's got literal mobility for the team. There's there's pretty much almost nothing that Arda can't do because talking about his passive Relic Quest, he can also heal his team because every time he hits an enemy with a spell, he actually builds up stacks under his mana bar there. And at max stacks, he'll actually heal himself and nearby allies. So great utility and great support tools on this Arda character. Exactly. He has been, I think, in the, throughout history of his pretty much existence in the game, no matter what the meta is, he's always had some way of fitting into the meta. I've never really seen Arda kind of falling off. Even in competitive, I've always seen this guy being a crutch pick for some players that really just didn't have anything that's been working through them for them throughout the course of the game or the series itself. They bring out the Arda and just randomly they do really good. <laughs> He's, he's always had a place in the, the meta is what I want to say about this guy. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's I think it's really interesting to consider a character like this because Arda on paper has a ton of mobility. But when playing him, especially if you haven't mastered the character yet, Arda can feel like he has almost no mobility because all of his mobility is built into his ultimate E Nimrod's tombstone, which lets him teleport from one point to the next. And that is a lot of power, but if you ever use that, you're sacrificing potentially using your Babylon's Dice to trap or CC someone, or potentially giving up your um, Shamash's Code, you know, to do extra damage in front of you. So it's kind of that juggling act of which piece of utility do I need at this very moment? And can I wait another cooldown rotation before using the next one? Exactly. There are a lot of different ways to go about playing Arda throughout the course of a fight, and we'll probably see that throughout the course of this game. But one way you can play him is by being very proactive at the start of the fight. We were talking about the, the cube as well as the dice earlier. There's a lot of situations where you probably even in your games have seen an Arda using both the dice and the cube exactly on top of each other. The AoE damage is just so good. The lockdown is absolutely massive as well. 
But there's another gameplay style where you actually decide to use those as a reactive tool instead. We're going to see that a little bit here, actually. You're going to start out the fight. As soon as you find some targets grouped up, you will use the dice, stun out a lot of people, and then pressure everybody else away. This did kind of get forced with the Magnus using his bike, as you saw earlier, past those animals. And it is going to be a bit of a support coming through from the backside. But they will pick up a couple kills. And that right there, again, is the benefits of an Arda. The double slow onto the Cathy and the Hedgen really allowed the Raz to actually catch up, dish out the damage, and get a couple kills. Absolutely. And actually, one of the more recent changes that have happened to Arna have really solidified this cube playstyle uh, more so than before. Previously with Arda, it was very common to be able to be doing RQs a lot more. You would RQ to kind of fish out plays. If you didn't want to hard commit, you'd always look and just be able to zone and put a lot of damage out because it was on a really short cooldown. But recently, RW and RE are only a couple seconds longer now than RQ and bring in a lot more value. So a lot of Ardas will very commonly start fights and mostly just spam RW uh, unless they need to use RE for some type of part, whether that be to get a teammate out, get a teammate in, get themselves out, create space throughout it. A lot of times they're only really using RQ to farm mobs. Mm -hmm. It's such a sad sight to see because I think Papyrus is one of the coolest skills in the game, just kind of sweeping out and then immediately popping afterwards. It looks so cool, but the actual utilization of it is very difficult. And a lot of the cases where Arda is going to be using the RQ, for example, is when the rest of his team has a lot of lockdown crowd control. And if that's the case, you're actually going to be seeing people with Arda actually locking them even further down with the RW, there is almost no <laughs> purpose in using the Papyrus to inside of like an actual fight unless you know for guarantee that you're going to land it. I see it a lot as a poking utility or a zoning utility when it comes to actually utilizing it at the beginning of a fight. For example, there, we just saw the cube locking down the Darko a little bit. Rozzy still continuing to throw out the damage. You can see he's still holding out on any of his really, really crucial skills. But now that it's back up, there it is. There is the Tombstone coming back up online. This time around, it's going to be the gate to further Further pushes teammates forward. Gonna try to chase down the Charlotte. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. His single target damage is a little bit annoying, <laughs> as you can tell. The Charlotte is just slowly but surely out healing. She needs to stay alive for about 10 or so more seconds. She should be able to do that. He's trying his best. The Magnus is gonna hyperloop in. Is this gonna be enough? Is the question. No, I, I mean, I think she's gonna be able to survive. She is definitely a, a very slippery character, but they are gonna be able to officially get the kill here now. Uh, I hopefully this character just uh, slipping sliding through it all but there she ends up going down finally to the cube route but one thing I really wanted to bring up on what you were talking about there on the purpose of utilizing your your RQ normally like you mentioned you're very commonly going to see RQ when your team has a lot of CC lockdown because that would essentially be the most damage but funny enough if your team has a lot of lockdown and you just use WRW on top of that lockdown, you not only lock them down for more, but you end up, if you actually have them stay in for all of your ticks of both your Ws, it actually does basically the same amount of damage that your RQ would have done. So, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of almost feels like RQ doesn't have a place in in like its purpose right now for for Arda. Yeah, the only purpose of it, in my opinion, is just to kind of fish for something, fish for some free damage because of the fact that it reduces your own unleashed powers cooldown. Outside of that, there is so much that Arda is able to do with the unleashed power that it almost makes it really unnecessary in a lot of cases. You're mostly also looking for the reproc damage, and that takes a while. If you've played around in Arda, you know how easy it is to see it coming and how easy it is to most of the time dodge out of the second proc as well. It's one of the reasons why Arda's are going to typically not use the Papyrus as the unleashed version of it. And that's alright. He has so many other things, as I said, that he can utilize with his ultimate. He might as well just do that instead and be a lot more useful to not just himself but also to his teammates no exactly and also just to talk about item order that art has kind of done here so he went persona first as his main buy honestly persona the main common idea behind this and why like a lot of artists will end up running this over is for that that movement speed that 0 0.1 
uh, actually helps them out a lot, which means he'll most likely go the blood cloak onto his chest piece since he is not running the astronaut helmet, which is the other variant if you wanted to go with like holy orders instead of persona. The other thing being his Tendalus Monarch, this has got to be your go to bread and butter on Arda as the extra 5% really, really helps solidify the rest of your abilities. Guaranteed. The additional cooldown reduction isn't even, I think, the biggest part of it. It's how cheap it is in comparison to some of the blood items that you might need in order to go 40%. It's almost unnecessary in a lot of cases. A lot of the art builds that I've seen throughout the course of his history, extremely cheap, but so efficient is the big way that I want to talk about him. I'm over, I've almost never seen this guy prioritizing things like the death. I've never seen him really prioritizing things like the tap roots unless he finds it from somewhere. Even the prominence is not something that he tends to prioritize. It's just the Tindalos Monarch and that's about it. Maybe, just maybe, there were some times where he was running the Scotties instead for the additional slow coming from the Lich's Grasp. But why do that when you can have more cooldown when your skills are already low cooldowns as it is? No, exactly. And there again, we're just kind of always fishing to start fights off with a box. I mean, that was a really good catch. Unfortunately, his team not there to follow up. And as you can see, he also tries to walk forward and immediately put down a tombstone in front of the target that he catches. If done properly, you can actually bounce them back into your boxes and then juggle them in a stun CC. Oh yeah, we're gonna see that a lot, I think. This guy's been doing pretty good. His reaction times, as soon as he sees some targets within his field of vision, he's gonna use the Dyson Q. We've seen it over and over again. That's the hallmarks of a really, really good art player. It's just really good reaction times, figuring out what skills are gonna be important as soon as a, a situation arises. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I really can't play this guy. I can never react to a situation <laughs> correctly. When it comes down to it, I always freak out and press all the wrong buttons in the world but it's so difficult to deal with an Arda that has really good instincts on what he needs to be doing what kind of skills are going to be the best case scenario at a specific point we've seen him do a lot of correct correct inputs i should say throughout some of these fights yeah exactly and actually what i find the most interesting and i love to see is him utilizing re's in the middle of a fight because it, you, again, you'll always see the activation of cube. That's very common. That's that's all art is bread and butters. But it's knowing to use your RE, activating those gates to try and help enable a fight better, right? And like create this extra space because it actually can really throw off opponents when you have this lingering gate, knowing that any point in time you can click this and teleport to another direction. 100%. Uh, it's one of the calls that I make the most frequent to my Arda teammates if I'm playing something like an Ikeon, for example, if, especially if I'm playing something like Crit Death Adder, because the whole idea around Crit Death Adder is that you need to catch people off guard and get the damage output, the burst damage, as soon as possible. Arda makes it so much easier. You just immediately jump into the back line. That's the calls I really like to make. It saves your teammates a lot of utility of running around. For example, in this team, it might not be that big of a deal, but using the Arda gate is going to allow your Razi to save her flutter. It's going to allow your Razi to save the moving reload to close the distance onto anybody. And it allows her to actually use those skills inside of a fight. It is so, so good. You can see the lockdown potential onto a single target character without that much ability like the Barbara on our screen here that's just the added bonus of an arda especially considering look how cheap his items are he gets so much value out of them no exactly and actually really interesting to see too i mean he was very very patient and ended up not actually using his e to knock the barber back he didn't want to risk to see if she blinked or tried to like get away because a very very common thing to notice with arda's is if you mess up your E, sometimes you can actually also bounce them out of your combo mm. instead of putting them more deeply into it. I hate to see it sometimes, but you know what? That's the trick of the trade. Again, it's one of the things that kind of distinguish a decent Arta from the best Artas, right? Making sure that your entire kit comes into use during your combos. If you mess it up here and there, yeah, that's fine. But if you do it consistently over and over again, you're not only going to hurt yourself, but again, I said a lot of your skills is the Arta. 
helps your teammates. If you mess up your combos like that and throw people away with the tombstone, then yeah, it's going to mess up your teammates' combo rotations a lot more too. His skills, very, very visual. Your teammates are going to be able to play around it, but if you start messing up and throw people away from your skills, well, your teammates that were reacting to your own visual skills are also going to be thrown away too. Yeah, no, 100%. Now, actually, another thing too, uh, we didn't get to talk about just yet, is his, uh, his Sentinel. So the two common things right now when it comes to Arda's is Sentinel and also the usage of Red Sprite. So Sentinel, I actually think is probably the better play over Red Sprite. Technically, you can go Red Sprite. Red Sprite's more damage, more poke, you know, big, big burst of damage output. But I don't think Arda needs it to, to be able to kill people. And Sentinel works so well with your passive in keeping people alive. It just, it blocks damage, it keeps people alive a little longer, lets you be able to get more passives off to heal them, to keep them more sustained, and it lets you duel. I've actually won a lot of fights that I feel like I would have lost by just out-sustaining enemies, by running circles around them, and slowly healing and shielding their damage. Yeah, in the end, the value of Sentinel will just rise the longer and longer fight goes. We've seen it throughout the course of this game, and it's probably going to get worse from now on as well for some of the other teams, because there is a Magnus in this team as well. But extended fights are pretty commonplace for a lot of artists, unless you have a full three stack DPS comp. It's almost unheard of that, uh, that uh, what is it? Uh, an Arda is going to be able to burst somebody down. That's usually not what's going to end up happening. So the Sentinel does indeed get a lot of value. The gate was a little bit awkward there as he brought his own Razi straight into the bear. Shuichi should theoretically be able to get away, try to blink away from the wicked up team that's also sitting inside of Force. Going to have to utilize his ultimate to try to get away. This team has, quite interestingly, a lot of kills for how little they fought. <laughs> um, yeah. Eight kills. I haven't noticed that much, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, it really doesn't feel like we fought too much yet. I mean, we've been trying, I mean, we've been playing relatively safe, trying to really control the zones that we can control and haven't been pushing too deep into other teams. And there's also like teams like this Charlotte team down here in the bottom of Chapel. Like they've been hiding like that Darko sat in warehouse for like two day cycles before buying back this team. And now they're just kind of hiding in Chapel in the cubby. So not every team is really looking for fights. And we just haven't really found our opportunities. But, I mean, great usage of, of Arda using gates there. Like, I mean, sure, he aggroed the bear, but he gated through Chapel to cut off the Suichi, which was really nice. Some Ardas wouldn't even consider to use gate like that. And too bad Magnus didn't take that gate and, you know, wall slam the Lennox there kind of play. Very, very risky. Fortunately, I think the one team that I do that I did want to see this team kind of fight up against, which was team number five, they end up getting taken down. I think that might have been in force or something like that. Ava and Zaheer is two different characters that will definitely outrange a majority of artist skills. So I was kind of hoping to see some kind of an initiation using the gate. We're not going to be able to see it here in this game. That is a triple dice coming in onto the members of team number three. Down goes the Charlotte. What a beautiful initiation. Darko's going to jump into the fight. Magnus is going to be able to get out he has so much sustain he's keeping his teammates alive with the sentinel and the healing from his passive as well that right there is the bonus benefits of the arda they managed to get a couple kills and do end up getting out all three players alive beautiful catch out with the dice beautiful reaction times and that right there again is the reason why i see reaction times as one of the things that differentiate a good arda player and a great arda player no, exactly. And I mean, the second that he knew that there was someone in that bush from the reaction check from the Magnus, absolutely just trying to put that catch down in that catching out the Charlotte. Really, really good plays coming in from, from Arda here. I'm excited to see where the next kind of fight comes from because it looks like it might be the team in Cemetery, right? Which is the mirror match of the other Arda. Oh yeah, it's going to be a mess. We'll see which Arda is able to land a couple more skills. Hopefully it's going to be this one. Again, he's had a lot of really good skill uses, skill usages throughout the course of this game. But when there is something like a Lennox on the other side and as a here, this composition that we have on our screen is not really able to, is it not really able to follow up with the amount of crowd control that they have. It's a lot more of the damage coming in from the Razi. The, other side actually has a good bonus of both, really. There's a here as well as the Arda. There was a lot of lockdown. There's a lot of crowd control. There's a lot of damage coming in from that one. It's going to be difficult 
to let this Razi run freely. So what is the options that our Arda is going to do? And will we even see the fight actually happen, right? That's it, the first one. <laughs> yeah, it might actually be this fight here instead. And there we actually see the box cube instantly going on, like keeping the Piolo back, trying to isolate the team. It's, it's again, it's these zoning pressures that we can do. And again, a cube right on top of our Razi, it's instantly deterring any type of dive onto them. The enemy team having to back off the Magnus just being able to freely do what he wants. And again, you can even see the sustain, like Rozzy just healing up a bunch from the Arda passives, just kind of healing her through it and shielding her. It's this kind of utility and zoning pressure that really, really makes Arda strong in these kind of fights. Absolutely. It almost makes me wonder what his healing and shielding stats were, right? That's one of the biggest things about the gameplay style that we're seeing here. He's playing almost a support-esque role, but he's doing it so perfectly that he's actually landing a lot of skills and doing more damage than what a support is usually supposed to be doing in the situation. Not playing too greedy, not you know pushing up just because of Magnus was doing a lot of damage to the back line. No, he is keeping his damage dealer on this team, the Razi, safe and... Uh, you know, controlled inside of the fight. The dice, you mentioned it, on top of her throughout the course of the fight. The cubes also dropping on top of her as well, making sure that none of the melee characters on Team 3, whichever were, you know, trying to jump on her, or actually maybe it was Team 8, even worse because there was a Marcus and a Piolo. Yeah, that Razi was not dying anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. Just being able to just keep that Razi safe. And I think, I think that's one of the things that I love the most about Arda is the fact that he is able to be both these things right like arda is a strong control mage able to control and cc opponents but he's also really really good at being able to be a support right he's got support utility especially when you run sentinel right you're shielding you're healing you're being that team player but then also you're you're a zone control mage keeping people safe that way and then you're able to just dish out so much damage and utility we're seeing him actually use the Nimrod's Gate as a bit of a poking tool. That means the Unleashed Power is not available for this immediate duration of the fight, but the fight gets split. Look at the positioning of that cube. There is no way an Arda and a Zaheer is going to be able to push on through. That allows everybody to jump on specific targets. Lennox was completely isolated as way as well. But now look at this. The two damage dealers on each respective teams are dead. The HP of the Magnus is actually starting to outdo the amount that the Lennox has, which in fact, HP is good. Nice catch out onto the Arda coming through from the Magnus. And it's going to take a while, but this team should be able to kill the Lennox eventually. She's going to get taken down. A bit of an anticlimactic last zone fight, but that's what you get when it's an Arda versus an Arda. A lot of zone control, a lot of control throughout the fights. And that right there just shows you that this guy was just better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it looked anticlimactic because our Arda that we were watching did just catch out the other Arda and completely control that fight. Great placements of the abilities. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will catch you in the next one.